Well, we probably thought we could count, um, but we're going to make life a little bit more complicated. And the point is, the reason for doing this is that we, we want to enumerate a finite sample space. And Berger and Casella give us this idea of a fundamental theorem of counting. And the idea is if we think about a job that consists of k tasks and that the ith task can be done in n sub i different ways. Therefore the entire job can be done in n sub 1 multiplied by n sub 2 multiplied by all the way through to n sub k different ways. And they all they go on to give a proof certainly for k equals 2 that this fundamental theorem is correct. So for instance if we think about um, multiply one possibility by n2. So we're saying I'm combining two tasks so the first task can be done in one way and there are n sub 2 possible ways of completing the second task. We then have to add to this one of the other possibilities for task n1 multiplied by n2 and of course we're going to have to continue this multiplication until we've added we're going to have to continue this until we've added all n1 different possibilities and of course this sum is just n1 multiplied by n2 when we simplify so that's the fundamental theorem of counting and we're basically going to use this principle in slightly different ways to deal with slightly more interesting problems okay we're going to use a die to illustrate sampling with replacement so six-sided die there are six possibilities I roll the die I have an experiment and a realization of one number from the six possibilities if I now introduce a second die uh, I am so-called sampling with replacement just because I have rolled a three on this die doesn't mean I can no longer roll a three on on the second die so I have six possibilities with this die, six possibilities with this die, and there are 36 possible ways of putting the die together. So I have a random sample with replacement, six possibilities here, multiplied by six possibilities here. Alternatively, I could roll one die, collect one die, collect one die, collect. And I can extend this to as many die as I want. In this case, I have six possibilities multiplied by six, multiplied by six, multiplied by six, multiplied by six. An opposite idea in sampling is to think of a pack of cards. A standard UK deck, there are 52 cards. So with a shuffled pack, the first card is a realization from 52 possibilities. I then have 51 cards left, so there are 51 possible ways, so here we have 52 multiplied by 51 possibilities. And this continues, take another card, I have 52 multiplied by 52 minus 1, multiplied by 52 minus 2, and I can continue doing this um, until we get to the very end of the pack, and I have at the end three possibilities and then I multiply it by two possibilities and of course there is only one possible card to take the last position. 52 multiplied by 52 minus 1 multiplied by 52 minus 2 and so on um, all the way down until 1. We should recognize that as 52 factorial. Okay we'll start looking at what's perhaps the simplest case and that's where we're thinking about sampling that is ordered but we have replacement um, of items. So if we think about the case where we're rolling a die, the first die we roll, there are six possible outcomes. And as the fundamental theorem of counting tells us, if we roll a second die, total number of outcomes, we will multiply by six. And we continue this for as many as the die we are throwing. If we want to generalise this, of course, 
we don't want to just roll a die. We want to consider um, an, an event that has more outcomes. We could denote these as having n possible outcomes and multiply this by as many times as we carry out a sampling exercise. And of course, if we have a total of k such samplings, the total number of possibilities are n to the power k. If we think about the pack of cards prototype, there we're basically carrying out um, sampling without replacement. So we draw the first card and there are 52 possibilities. There are then 51 cards left in the pack. So if we're going to draw two cards, there are going to be 52 multiplied by 52 minus 1 possibilities. And if we're going to continue this until we've ended up drawing every single card, this is going to continue right the way down until we have the very last card where there's clearly no choice by then. And you recognise that instantly. This is just 52 factorial. So in the more general case, um, where we're considering not just 52 cards, but any n items, we have n factorial ways in which we can sample with replacement from that pool. In practice, though, we might not want to sample all n of those entities. So specifically, if we think about playing cards, perhaps what we want to do instead is just to draw um, k of those. And let's consider how many ways there are of drawing k possibilities from a, a sample space of size n. So if we think about that and just look briefly, well, what's going to happen is that we have first n possibilities and then, of course, n minus 1 possibilities. And this is going to continue until we get to n minus k plus 1. If we think about what happened um, earlier, we have 52 possibilities. On the second card, 52 minus 1. On the third card, 52 minus 2. So the number we're interested in is up to and including k plus 1. Now that's the definition. It happens to be notationally a little bit untidy. So what we can do is rather a strange little trick, but we can continue to expand this factorial so that we have n minus k all the way until we again get to 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. And of course, how are we going to get rid of those? We're basically going to take n minus, divide this by n minus k, multiplied by n minus k minus 1, all the way down until we get to the last possibilities. So in fact, what we're doing here is we are dividing n factorial by n minus k factorial. And of course, this is just a convenience trick um, that basically lets us cancel out all these terms in green. So by multiple, by continuing to expand this factorial here, but also dividing by the factorial, it gives us this simpler notation here. But the key point to note, what's going on when we sample k items from n? We basically have n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by as many times as we need to, until we get to n minus k plus 1. That's the definition of what we do. This is just a little trick that gives us nice notation. We've just seen, if we were sampling without replacement, uh, to count the number of possibilities, we have this notationally convenient formula, n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, where we're drawing a set of size k, such as a hand of cards, from 
a larger space such as a pack of cards of size N. Typically though when we think about playing cards we don't care about the ordering of these K entities that we're drawing. So if we consider K consisting of an ace of spades and an ace of clubs we don't care whether we got the ace of spades before or after the ace of clubs. So what we need to do is convert our method for evaluating the ordered space and looking at all the different ways we can get the same outcome so that we can ignore the ordering. In effect we're using something that Baklavsky calls the shepherd principle. If it's too hard, hard to count the number of sheep in a flock, count the number of legs and divide by four. So we know how many ways there are of organising a set of size k. Now all we need to do is divide by the number of sets, the number of ways we could organise that set of size k. And of course we know that that's going to be given by k factorial. So we simply take n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied by n minus k factorial. And this is... So common, it has its own notation, n choose k, and you should also maybe recognise that from the binomial theorem. So this is our identity that tells us how we enumerate the number of possibilities there are when we're looking at sampling in an unordered way. We don't care about the ordering, but we are replacing. The final situation we have to consider is where again we don't care about the ordering but that we are sampling with replacement. So this is something akin to the exercise we do with the die um, where we can just roll the die and we get the same uh, number of possibilities each time. So if we think just to that die possibility there are in fact six outcomes possible for each die and what we're saying is we're then going to roll these die and we can get any of these possibilities in any order. So we could get a 1 followed by a 5 and we could actually get a 1 again. But this time we want to count the possibilities where we don't care about the ordering. Maybe we got the 5 first and then the 1s. Maybe we got a 1 and then a 5 and then a 1. And the simplest way of thinking about this is to actually use a little trick where we divide. Think about dividing the space into bins. And what we essentially have now is a set of a marker and a marker and a boundary and a boundary and a boundary and a boundary and a marker and then another boundary. And we don't care about the end boundaries. And what we want to think about are the number of ways we can rearrange this, bearing in mind each of these is in some sense unique. So of course what we have here are the n, the six possible ways um, that we could roll a die, plus the three ways, the three die that we are going to roll, less one because we're actually not going to consider all n of the die anymore, we're going to consider the walls. And this gives us some sense of the scale of the problem, but this reduces simply to the previous one, in which case we need to find this factorial divided by the number of ways in which we could roll a 1, a 1 and a 5, or the 3 die, and of course we need to divide out factorial as above. And this gives us an expression for enumerating when we're sampling an unordered way with replacement.